Dzień dobry, cześć, hello. What's going on, guys? It's been a few months that I've been in Poland, and since I've been here, I was thinking about a couple of different things that I've been seeing in Poland and, you know, amongst Polish people, you know, their traits and things like that, that I think that the U.S. could learn from and Americans could learn from. So today we're just going to be talking about that. And if you think that I left out any, then let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, guys, let's just get started. So the first one is just being proud of being Polish. And this might cause some controversy, I know, because there's so many Poles that will just instantly tell me that, you know, they hate being Polish or they hate being, you know, in Poland and they just want to leave and, you know, all of this. And I hear that all the time. But at the same time, I do notice and see a lot of people that are very proud of being Polish. So I know that when I talk about Poles being proud of Poland and, you know, you know, going on a march, you know, that's celebrating the country, you know, on November 11th on their Independence Day in Poland, you know, a lot of people will talk about nationalism and they'll start saying that the line is crossed and that this is essentially just nationalism. And I don't believe that to be the case in most cases. And in fact, I really just think a lot of people are just proud of the country, proud of the heritage, regardless of, you know, wherever the politics are, whether it's left or right or center or where, doesn't matter. A lot of people are very proud of, you know, Poland being here for all of the things that, you know, it went through. From almost being wiped off the map a few times to the tried Sovietization, Poland has gone through a lot. And I think Poles should be very proud of, you know, where they are, where the country is at right now. And I've met a lot of Poles actually that are unapologetically prideful in their culture, their heritage. And I think that's great. And so when we're talking about Americans being prideful, I actually don't really see that anymore. So after 9-11, Americans were extremely patriotic for their country. And and essentially after that and into recent years, Americans are not really, you know, prideful of America. And a lot of people will assume because I live in Poland that I don't like the US. And this really couldn't be further from the truth. I actually love America and I'm proud of who I am. And I know that a lot of people also think that, you know, this channel is really just a bash on the US entirely. And that's not the case. I'm quite prideful about America. I really like America and I have no problems with it. And so so yeah, I think that a lot of Americans now actually don't have that stance. And even when I was telling a couple Americans that I was moving and going to live in Europe, a lot of them were like, good, you know, this place is over. It's horrible. It's, you know, it's gone. And I really don't think that's the case. Instead, I just wanted to live in another country, learn another language, learn another culture, etc. This wasn't out of spite that I hated America or anything like that. So yeah, I think nowadays Americans just don't really have much pride in their country for what it is. And I've traveled to a few different countries over the world. And I gotta say, the US is really a great place. And I think Americans should start realizing that. Hey guys, before we get into the next point of the video, I just wanna thank the sponsor of the video, which is I Talkie. I've been talking about italki a lot in the past, and now when they asked me to sponsor a video, I gladly accepted because I've always recommended their services and I've always used them before in the past, even when I wasn't sponsored by them. So today I want to talk about italki and an opportunity for you guys to have. So italki is a one-on-one -on -one teaching language program, which is really essential for everyone who's learning a language. This is something you need to do at some point or another. Italki is a platform where basically you can meet teachers or community teachers and learn your target language. Right now there is a new year's resolution campaign going on. All you have to do is follow my link in the description below. Once you're there, you can set your language learning goals. So I think with Polish, my level is around, you know, a level two or a level three amongst Italki's, you know, certification here. And so you can see here, once you click that, then you can essentially put, I want to learn Polish so I can talk with native speakers. Yeah, I want to do that. Uh, have fun. Who doesn't want to have fun, right? Uh, understand TV shows and movies. Yes, please. Travel or study abroad. Yes, hello. Succeed in my career. Not going to need that, but the other reasons, yes. And then you can put in every week I'm going to study X amount of hours. So for me, it's around four to five. So here you can see in 2022, I want to learn Polish five hours every single week 
for two months that it's going to take me. It's a two months forecast, and then I can make it to level four advanced, and I can talk about a wide range of topics. So once you enter this with my link in the description below, and you actually book your first class, you will get entered to have a chance of winning up to a year of free lessons. And the last day for this campaign is actually February 4th. So if you take a class before that date, then you're going to be automatically entered to win. Choose the teacher and choose the time. I think my favorite thing about italki is that you can learn a language anywhere in the world. When I was living in the US and using italki, I was still able to immerse myself into the language and culture by talking every week with a native speaker. I promise you that using a language learning resource like italki is going to improve your language learning skills, no matter what the language is. Every language I will be learning will always incorporate italki. So what are you waiting for? 2022 is here. Now you can learn your desired language. And italki is one of the best resources for you to learn a language that you always wanted to. Use my link in the description below to be entered into having a chance to win up to a year of free lessons. Anyways, guys, back to the video. And so that brings me to the next point, which is kind of bashing America, which I just talked about, but that is consumerism. And the thing is, is that Americans are consumers. And this is one bad trait about America. Okay, I love America. I love Americans. You know, I'm American. But at the same time, consumerism is really bad in the US. And I have to say, in recent years, I actually see it growing exponentially here in Poland. And just amongst the few years, actually, I've really noticed it kind of take off, you know, greatly here with, you know, a lot of e-commerce websites and, and things like that. But yeah, I really think polls for the most part are quite modest and, you know, they're not really big consumers like Americans are, right? And so for my entire life, it just seemed like all I knew was just consumerism. And that's all I knew until I started going to Canada to visit my family as a kid, or actually when I even went to South America and I went to Ecuador for basically a month and stayed down there. And I realized that the rest of the world was not like that. And instead it was really just the US. They were really big into consumerism. And so when we're comparing Poland to the US in this regard, I really think that polls are quite modest and they are not as big of consumers as Americans are. And speaking of consumerism, the next point is treating debt as something serious. I've spoken to a couple of Europeans in general about debt and you know what, what their views are on it. And same thing with polls. And they often tell me that debt is extremely serious here. And if you have it, it needs to be paid off immediately. And so with Americans, this is quite the contrary. Most Americans are really not too adamant about you know paying off their debts or you know trying to be debt free in general. They really don't care. I think in some cases their debt is just seen as this extremely high number. Like when you graduate from university and you finally see that you, your student loans are something like, you know, over $30,000 or whatever. And then you just think, oh my God, how am I going to live in an apartment, pay this off? And obviously it's a big issue, but I think at the same time, there's really kind of a lazy approach with paying it off. And I know that in some cases people will say debt is good, like in the US when it comes to credit cards, which can really offer a lot of benefits if you're actually smart with your money. But at the same time, on average, Americans carry $6,194 in credit card debt. So at the same time with credit cards, there's a lot of people that just simply aren't paying off their debt. And so Poles and Europeans in general seem to really take debt seriously. And if you have it, it's something that is going to be paid off immediately. Whereas Americans just seem to kind of have a lazy approach and not just lazy, but just kind of like a hopeless, you know, look at it that there's just thousands and thousands of dollars that's you know super difficult to pay off and because of that they're just never going to pay it off so yeah I, I think that one trait that americans could really learn from polish people would be taking debt as something serious and to pay it off whenever you can immediately. And that brings me to the next point, which is being more family oriented. In the US, it seems that, you know, over the course of years through my life and, you know, comparing it with my friends' lives in the US, it seems like Americans have just been less and less family oriented over the course of the past, you know, few years and really just the past decade. It seems like, you know, they're really just a lot less family oriented than what they were before. And I don't know, maybe can you guys relate on this one? You know, if there's any Americans out there, do you think that 
this is true, but it, it's kind of my gut feeling and amongst, you know, just talking with my friends who are Americans, it seems like that's kind of the same case with them as well. Whereas Poles are family oriented and it seems like that's really a big priority in their lives. And yeah, it's like not just, you know, holidays and, and all of that stuff where of course Americans, you know, are family oriented on those days as well, but also just getting together time to time or, you know, having a barbecue in the summer and, and getting together with friends and family. That seems to be, you know, a big thing that it has a priority over job life. Whereas, you know, Americans seem to be working themselves to death and never having any type of personal time or anything like that. And then personally, that's something I struggle with in my own life, even now in Poland. I feel like I'm still a workaholic, so it's something that I'm trying to work on and be more Polish in. And the next point, and I've said this one before, and I'm gonna say it again, is the quality of food. The quality of food here does not compare. So I have a story, which is my girlfriend and I were in the US and we were going to Walmart and we ended up getting bread there. And when we got back to my apartment, she got it and she smelled it. And then her, the look on her face was just utter disgust. And she just thought that it smelled like pure chemicals. And then when she tasted it, she had to spit it out because she said that it was so bad. And this was bread that I've been praising my whole life. I thought was really good until I went to Poland and tried bread here and I realized how good it was. And then when I came back to the US and tried that same bread, I couldn't even look at it anymore because whenever I looked at it or smelled it, it was absolutely horrible. So that's just another point is that Europe has a higher standard when it comes to food and you know the real quality of that food. And there's many different, you know, quality procedures that they have to go through here versus in the US, there's not as many. And I feel like this is a big problem that many Americans don't even know about. And really, in fact, I didn't either. I thought our food was decent. I thought, you know, it was great and fine, but really, it's not. And I think if more Americans traveled and realized the quality of their food, they would surely probably change this. And so that brings me to the next point, which is cleanliness. And this brings me into a couple of different things, like number one, the cleanliness of a house or a car. It seems like Polish people really take care of these things and they always keep it clean. They always keep their yards cleaned, their houses cleaned. There's no you know, walking of shoes in the house like in the US. You know, their cars are clean, everything is clean. And even going into, you know, people's outfits of what they're wearing here, people actually take time to care about how they dress and present themselves to the world. And I think this is really cool because even if you go to, you know, just any type of grocery store, people are not wearing sweatpants and a hoodie, which, you know, was sometimes fun in the US to do. People aren't doing that here. Instead, people want to look really professional, really clean, really dressed up, really presentable to the world. And whereas in America, you can essentially walk around in pajamas which I'm sure sounds like a dream to some Polish people out there. It's really not that cool actually. And you know, it just looks much better to be so much more presentable. And I've been in Poland for a few months now and I really think that this is a cool thing. I think it's cool that you can go to any store or just really any location and people are going to be dressed up. They're gonna look good. They're gonna look presentable and respectable. Whereas in the US, it's really not the case. A lot of people will not care about what they look like. And in reality, I think the way that we present ourselves really, you know, says a lot about you, your character, and how you want to be respected anyway. So it really says a lot about you. And I think that Americans could definitely learn this about Polish people and Europeans in general. And so that brings me to the next point, which is being realistic or a realist. And I know that I, I feel like a lot of people who say that they're a realist, you know, when, when someone asks, are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? You know, and someone says, oh, I'm a realist. Most people will probably assume that you're a pessimist. And yeah, I feel like it's kind of borderline pessimistic, but at the same time, I think in most cases, Americans are extremely optimistic. And sometimes I think it's just way too far. And I remember coming to Poland for the first time and just being so refreshed actually by all of the realists out here that are really just you know not overly optimistic as most Americans are. And to be honest, this was really refreshing. And so this turns into things like you know people's outlook on life, death, uh, you know living, you know money. 
uh, politics, everything. I feel like people have so much of a realist point of view here. But this is just one thing that I really like about Poles and Poland in general. And honestly, I feel like Americans could kind of learn from Poland and Polish people from this because sometimes it's not good actually to be overly hopeful and instead to have a different point of view on it. And yeah, it's just been refreshing since I've been to Poland and I've seen that. So anyways, guys, what did you think of this video? And was there anything that I was missing? I'm curious. Let me know in the comment section down below. And then anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Jinkui e, Davidson.